All right, welcome to the third part in this lecture series on using Node Red with Arduino environment to transmit data to AWS IoT Core. So, in the previous lecture, we injected a fake data package right from the cloud in Node Red right over to our topic in AWS IoT. So, this is the cool lecture where we do it for real life and it's much more exciting. So, we can keep this as it is. But what we're going to do on input is add a HTTP node for incoming data to our IP address, our static IP up here on the IBM web server. Now you might be asking, why don't we use MQTT on input? Throughout the rest of the course, that's what we're going to do. But for this example, it's a little bit easier just to use a simple REST GET. And I'll probably provide a script how to do MQTT on input. But if we do it at the Arduino, we're going to need to use the PubSub library, set up some topic, and it's a little more complicated. So for this simple example, I'm just going to use the REST HTTP. But eventually I'll probably, if you guys want, I'll give you an MQTT on input script. And remember, we're using MQTT on the output as we need to with AWS IoT. If we want to use EC2 or do something differently and set up our own web server on AWS, we're perfectly able to use REST or MQTT or whatever we want. There's different ways to do that. But for AWS IoT Core, it requires MQTT on output, but we can use whatever we can configure here on input. So let's configure our HTTP node for input from our Arduino. So I'm just going to double click this and I'm going to use the git method. You might ask, oh, why don't I use a RESTful post or git? Normally git's just a little bit easier to deal with, a little bit more flexible, but it'll work for us. So for our URL, that's just going to be our URL extension when we add it in our web browser or to our Arduino script. So I'm just going to call it my test as opposed to test 55 as we had it on the outgoing node. So I'll just call it my test. I think I have to add an extra T. There we go. So there it is, my test. Now that we have this set up, we're already in the previous lecture connected to AWS IoT. So a good thing right now that we can do before we start messing around with our Arduino script and I explain that to you is we can test this. Now we could use a testing tool like curl from the command line, which is really powerful and easy to use. Or we could use a tool like Postman, which is like a Chrome extension and super flexible for using HTTP requests. But I'm just going to make it super simple. I'm going to open a new browser window and I'm just going to send it directly to our node red via browser. And if you look at my Hackster project or my all about Arduino wireless course, I have a project where I use the ESP8266 in an Arduino environment to update a Google spreadsheet using wireless and REST. And I'm using the same script and I test it exactly this way and through curl. So you can look at that project as well. I'll provide you a link in the download folder. But what we're going to need to make this work is we're just going to copy this first extension of our web address. Actually, I'll copy it here so I can put in that URL extension. So I'm going to open a new browser window. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm just going to use a variable value format for temperature and humidity as extension. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say my test. Remember, that's what we just added to that incoming node. Then the variable value format on a browser window for rest is simple question mark. We'll call this variable temp equals arbitrary number 55. And the next value is simply going to be the ampersand and humidity. I probably didn't need to capitalize that, but whatever. 66. And if we want to add additional variables, we would just keep going with ampersands. So how this works is when we send this off, it should come over here and update our MQTT client on AWS IoT. So let's go ahead and enter that topic again. Remember, it's test 55 on the outgoing node. Let's subscribe to that. Go back to our previous window here, and all we're going to do is input this. Now it's just going to spin. It actually got sent, hopefully already, but it's just going to spin because it doesn't really have any way to receive a server message saying it was completed successfully. But this is just for testing. And again, you can use curl or postman in this exact same format to test it. Let's make sure it got sent over here, and sure enough, we got that data packet, and you see the web browser and sending it to AWS. It was able to interpret that. And if we come back here and change this to 77, you can see it'll immediately update, re-enter that, go back to AWS IoT, boom, got it re-entered. So that's good news. That worked fine. So we know that our node red is set up correctly. So at this point, all we have to do is make sure our Duino script works. So node red works, our browser test works. We can close this out now, not confuse it. 
Now here's our Arduino sketch. And again, this is adapted from my ESP8266 to Google Sheet project. I just simplified it. And you can see I grayed out a lot of it because this actually is, if you want to connect to DHT11 or DHT22 using the Adafruit DHT library, that's the most common one on the web that everybody uses. Just on comment all this gray stuff and you will actually be able to connect a DHT on GPIO pin two and send live data through Node Red to AWS IoT. But for this to keep it simple, I just provided a example and I wanna talk about the important points. So the first thing I wanna do is set up a constant char as our web ID we're sending it to, that's the URL. So the only thing to note here, this is the exact name we named our web server, our static IP. Don't use the HTTPS first. For whatever reason, I don't know the exact reason, if you try to use HTTP here, HTTPS, the prefix, it will not work. So you just gotta go right into the web server URL. So this is just your connection protocol. I don't need to explain that. I'll assume you know how to set up the Arduino IDE environment for your device, whether using an ESP8266 or ESP32, or I can also provide you a very similar script for MKR1500 by Atmel. There's very little difference. They just copied the ESP library exactly almost. So that works really well too. I put a little delay between readings, so it'll take some time. And here's where the magic takes place. So I just generate a random number. You don't need to add a library for random. It's just inherently part of this. So you can see how that's set up. It generates a random temperature number from 10 to 90, a random humidity number five to 70. And it uses this client library. I instantiate a client object from the ESP client library. And I send it right here, a git my test. This has to match the incoming node on node red. And I say temperature equals this, this random number -ture. And just like we set up in the browser URL window and humidity equals this random number. And then the only other thing we have to do to make this work is send it with these appropriate headers. Now, if you wanna change my script to your own script, that's perfectly fine. I will advise you this isn't Python and this isn't JavaScript. This is like a C macro language. So it's very strictly defined. It took me a good amount of time to compose this script to work all the spaces on these client headers and everything has to be formatted correctly. It's not a forgiving language when it comes to using this with a web browser. It's not robust. So start with my script and then alter it and try to get yours to work. But normally what's gonna happen if you start playing around with it, you're not gonna get any data and you're not gonna know why. So start with my example and remember, again, it's not Python. You can't play with the spacing and the indenting and the wording, it's, it's not gonna work. So keep this script and this script will work. And then we're gonna send data. I'm not gonna do that now because it's gonna to take too long, but compile it, upload it to your ESP8266 or ESP32 device. This one's set up for the ESP8266. And it will come over here and start updating this. And I'll show you that in a second. But before I do that, there's just one extra comment I wanna make. I got an email from somebody from the course saying, hey, could you do Node Red with Raspberry Pi? I probably won't. And the reason is there's not a good reason to use Node Red with Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi based on that ARM A7 V2 is well supported by the AWS IoT SDK in multiple languages. And we're gonna go over that SDK in a couple different languages, Python and JavaScript later in the course. So there's no reason we wanna use another class cloud intermediary with the Raspberry Pi. It's super capable and AWS specifically focused on that Raspberry Pi architecture to get it to work and do anything you want, whether you want to use MQTT, HTTP, UDP, TCP, all different kinds of ways to program it in various languages. So there's no real reason to use Node Red and in a production environment, you wouldn't want to do that. So that's why I'm kind of reluctant to do a Node Red example using Raspberry Pi. I'd rather have you focus on that AWS IoT SDK made specifically for Raspberry Pi and its commercial derivatives. Okay, so I'll run this and you can check out the output and then ask any questions. And if you have any questions about the zip folder I provide, let me know.